Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Shalom, Makim. This is the brother Aaron, and today we're going to go over a class concerning the sons of Lot. So let's jump into it. This is Dictionary Definitions from Oxford Languages. Incest, sexual relations between people classed as being too closely related to marry each other. The crime of having sexual intercourse with a parent, child, sibling, or grandchild. This is Genesis 19 and 30. Now this is after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zor. And he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with their father. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name Ben-Ami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So Moab and Ammon are children of incest. So what we have here are two maps of Israel and the neighboring nations. So in the first, we see starting from the bottom is Edom, Moab, and Ammon. And then on the next is likewise, it's just blown up a little bit more, showing Edom, Moab, and Ammon. So what we find through the scriptures is that these three nations are always in cahoots against Israel. So let's move on. Edom, Moab, and Ammon. This is Ezekiel 25 and 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites, and prophesy against them. And say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, Because thou sayest, Aha, against my sanctuary, when it was profane, and against the land of Israel, when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah, when they went into captivity. Behold, therefore, I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession, and they shall set their palaces in thee and make their dwellings in thee. They shall eat thy fruit and they shall drink thy milk, and I will make Rabbah a stable for camels and the Ammonites a couching place for flocks, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So what we'll do next, we'll bring forth a modern day map with the ancient map of Israel showing how this prophecy came to pass. So what we have here are two maps of Israel, one of modern day Israel and one of ancient Israel. Now, according to the ancient Israel map, we see that the neighboring nations was that of Edom, Moab, and Ammon. Now, according to Ezekiel 25 again, it stated that the men of the east would make their dwelling place in thee and set their palaces in thee. Now, when we look at the modern day map, we see that the Jordanians currently occupy those areas in which Edom, Moab, and Ammon previously occupied. Now, I have a star next to the capital of Jordan, and the capital of Jordan is Amman. Now that's significant because in the ancient map, that is the same location in which the children of Ammon dwelt, northeast of the Dead Sea. This is Ezekiel 25 and 8. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab and Seir, now Seir is speaking of Edom, 
because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jeshemoth, Baal Mion, and Kiriathan, unto the men of the east with the Ammonites, and I will give them in possession that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. So this basically means that Moab and Ammon will no longer be remembered as Moab and Ammon, but they'll be remembered now as Chinese and Japanese. This is Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. So those same three neighboring nations of ancient Israel, that of Edom, Moab, and Ammon, these are the enemies of the Heavenly Father, and they have taken crafty counsel against his people, who are the children of Israel, who are the modern day blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So now let's bring forth some faces of the modern day leadership of Edom, Moab, and Ammon. So we have here the three leaders of Edom, Moab, and Ammon. So we'll start off first with Ammon. The leader of the Ammonites today is Shinzo Abe. He is the prime minister of Japan. Next, we have Xi Jinping, who is the president of the People's Republic of China. And then next, we have Joe Biden, the president of the United States. This is 2nd Esther 15 and 46. And thou, Asia, the partaker of the hope of Babylon, and art the glory of her person. Now, this Babylon is not speaking of ancient Babylon, but is speaking of the mystery Babylon, which is the United States of America. And that Asia is speaking of Moab, just as it mentioned in Ezekiel 25 and 8, when Moab and Edom both said, Judah are like unto the heathen. Okay. Verse 47, woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Thou hast made thyself like unto her, meaning that China has made herself like the United States and has decked thy daughters in whoredom that they might please and glory in thy lovers. China has taught their people the ways of the United States, which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Thou hast followed her that is hated. Who is hated? The United States of America is hated. And we'll bring out the precept concerning that. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. Therefore, said God, I will send plagues upon thee. The Most High will send plagues upon China. And he's already doing it at this time. Widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. So now let's bring forth a precept concerning that Second Ezra 15 and 48 concerning thou hast followed her that is hated. This is Revelation 17 and 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Now the ten horns represents the ten original nations that created the European Union. These nations shall hate the whore, which is the United States of America, and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Finding Lot's Sons. So what we'll do in this section is bring forth some historical references that solidify the thought as to why we believe that Moab and Ammon are the modern day Chinese and Japanese. So what we have here is the Chinese Recorder and Missionary Journal. Now, this journal was created to inform the Protestant missionaries in China. So let's read about it. The Chinese Recorder and Missionary Journal was published in 
or another form in Shanghai from 1867 to 1941, after which it was closed by Japanese authorities. The journal was the leading outlet for the English language missionary community in China, with a number of Chinese readers as well. In the 1920s and 1930s, under the editorship of Frank J. Rawlinson, it was known for its liberal theology and support of Chinese nationalism. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through um, the Chinese Recorder and Missionary Journal and find some revealing information concerning Moab in China. So what we have here, the Chinese Recorder, Volume 28, on page 523. The Theism of China. This was written in 1897. So let's go down to the red box. Why theism developed so slowly and achieved so little in China, I cannot tell. Doubtless, one reason was its isolation. Dreary desert wastes, high mountain ranges, and dangerous sea all tended to prevent frequent intercourse with other nations. And so China, like Moab, settled on her leaves. So we see, according to the Chinese recorder, that they are linking China to Moab, okay? So it states that she settled on her lees. So let's bring out the scripture that they are quoting concerning Moab. This is Jeremiah 48 and 11. Moab have been at ease from his youth and he have settled on his lees, okay? This is Destiny, the Magazine of National Life, September 1944, page 302, Heathen Nation. The heathen are to be awakened that they might come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which denotes a place of judgment. As the Lord destroyed the enemies of Jehoshaphat, so he will destroy the enemies of his kingdom. It is significant that it was Moab and Ammon, the ancestors of China and Japan, who came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Today, their descendants are the peoples of two great heathen countries both of which will evidently be against Israel in the final and last phase. This is Destiny, the Magazine of National Life, March 1944, page 82. The Japanese worship heathen gods. Their deities are also to come to judgment. And this is interesting in the light of the fact that it is the Black Dragon Society of Japan, which has been responsible not only for the present conflict with us, but for so much evil within their own land. So the prophet says, God will famish or make lean all the gods of the earth and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Here we have an added identification mark showing that the Japanese are Ammon. For the only great heathen empire occupying an island kingdom and controlling many isles in the Pacific is Japan. So what we're going to do now, we're going to bring forth some maps showing that migration pattern. So what we have here, once again, is an ancient map of Israel and then a modern day map. So in the ancient map, like before, starting from the bottom is that of Moab, who is the modern day Chinese people. And then that of the Ammonites, who are the modern day Japanese people. So when we look at the modern map, we see the migration eastward. So we have China eastward of Israel. And then we have the Japanese who occupied the Isles of the Pacific. This is The Japanese, Who Are They? by Thomas W. Plant. On page 24, it states, We venture to think that we have now made out a case for the identification of Japan with the children of Ammon, and to have given sufficient reason and evidences to account for the Israelitish similarities being found among the Japanese by Professor Udlam. It is useless to look in the west of Europe as some do for Moab and Ammon, when the Bible predicted that they should be sent eastward. This proving of Japan to be the children of Ammon carries with it the claim that the Chinese are the children of Moab. I have a pamphlet of 40 pages by Sakana dated 1906. It is the report of a lecture delivered at Exeter Hall, London on December 12, 1901 and deals with the arguments drawn from history and prophecy proving that China is Moab. This is Destiny, the Magazine of National Life, March 1944, page 81. 
Who are the Japanese? In Destiny for May and June 1938, this question was answered. Titled, The Japanese, Who Are They? That two-installment article by Thomas W. Plant has since been published in booklet form and is available for those who desire to verify the facts, which we will merely state the finding that the Japanese are the descendants of the Ammonites and their forefather was Ammon, son of Lot's daughter by her own father. So prayerfully, the source articles with the maps and scriptures will be sufficient in giving the understanding that the Moabites and Ammonites are the modern day Chinese and Japanese. Judgment of Lot's Sons. This is Psalm 60 and 8. Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Philistia triumph thou because of me. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into some commentaries and see what is pertaining unto Moab being a wash pot. So we have here Matthew Poole's commentary. Moab is my wash pot in which I shall wash my feet. I shall bring them into the lowest degree of servitude and make them contemptible and miserable. This is Benson commentary. Psalm 60 and 8. Moab is my wash pot. The wash pot being a mean article of household stuff for the use of the feet as the Syriac interprets it, the lowest part of the body. It is fit. It is a fit title for the Moabites whom David intended to bring into the lowest degree of servitude and to render contemptible. This is Jeremiah 48 and 38. There shall be lamentation generally upon all the housetops of Moab and in the streets thereof. For I have broken Moab like a vessel wherein is no pleasure, saith the Lord. They shall howl, saying, How is it broken down? How have Moab turned the back with shame? So shall Moab be a derision and a dismay to all them about him. It's because of their pride, the pride of China, because China has stated that they shall be the next superpower, when according to the word of the Heavenly Father, is that when Esau's kingdom falls, then the kingdom of the heavenly father will rise. So this is because of Moab's pride. Verse 40, for thus saith the Lord, behold, he shall fly as an eagle and shall spread his wings over Moab. Kiriath is taken and the strongholds are surprised and the mighty men's hearts in Moab at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pains. All that pride will go away in that day. Verse 42, and Moab shall be destroyed from being a people because he hath magnified himself against the Lord. He'll be destroyed by the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. So it states that Moab, like a vessel wherein is no pleasure, that is a vessel of dishonor and that comes from the heavenly father. This is Romans 9 and 21. Have not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So when we look back at Jeremiah 48 and 39, it states, they shall howl saying, how is it broken down? How have Moab turned the back with shame? Because China currently as a superpower walks in the pride of their heart. But the heavenly father will turn that pride into shame and dishonor. This is Jeremiah 48 and 46. Woe be unto thee, O Moab, the people of Kamash perisheth. For thy sons are taken captives and thy daughters captives. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days. Now this is twofold because they were first taken captive by the men of the east. But as it states here in verse 47, yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days. So we know that this will happen once again. This is Zephaniah 2 and 8. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revilings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of nettles and salt pits and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them and the remnant of my people shall possess them. This shall they have for their pride because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrible unto them 
for he will famish all the gods of the earth and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. And with that, I'd like to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Shalom.